Good morning, good morning. I have some Bible verses this morning that God has touched me with. It was very meaningful this morning. I was looking back at my past where I was living according to the desires of the flesh. And these scriptures that I was reading this morning just reminded me of who I once was and who I am now in Christ. Guys, if you love the word of God, you're going to appreciate these verses because I truly was in the flesh. The old passed away and now the new in Christ is here. And I like to take it serious. I love the word of God because it convicts the heart. I remember back in 2017, guys, where I heard a message being preached, which I now look back and I call that cheap grace. I don't like to take it lightly. God's grace is here for all of us. He loves all of us as children of God. But we have to be very careful how we live. Have you ever thought about the verses about living a godly life and live in purity as Christ is pure? <laughs> At that time, I uh, heard a message being preached about once saved, always saved, which are good messages, by the way. There's a lot of scripture that knows that, that talks about when we're sealed, we're sealed. And I remember the way, you got to be careful how it's preached. How it was preached made me feel okay with my sin at the time, and I stayed in it. I remember being done with that and went right back to watching pornography and just watching so much desires of the flesh and fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Once you obey something, then you become a slave to it. And now, my identity in Christ, I have power and authority over that. I make it obey me. I don't obey it. I don't like to obey alcohol and get drunk anymore. I don't like to obey sexual immorality anymore. I don't like to obey the desires that the enemy reminds me of and puts thoughts right here in my brain to go ahead and fulfill it anyway. You know you want it, Eli. No. Watch this. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 says, Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Woo! We're alive in Christ Jesus. We can say no to the sin, sin nature and desires of the flesh. Verse 12 says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts. I used to obey its lusts. Now I obey Christ. I pick up my cross and follow Jesus, and I'm going to say no to those lusts and desires of the flesh. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Woo! Guys, the Word of God is so beautiful and so amazing. Watch this. Watch this, guys. Watch. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. That makes me almost emotional. He's calling us the sons of God, guys. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. What is of the world? What is that referring to? Anything outside of Jesus Christ is of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those that don't know Christ, the desires of the flesh I just talked about, all those things are of the world because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, according to Scripture, we know that when he shall appear, Jesus shall appear, like in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, where the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain shall be caught up in the air to be in the clouds with Jesus forever. Then we get a glorified body. We, don't, we can't comprehend that quite yet, but we know and look forward to that day that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Woo! And every man that has this hope is him in him purifies himself. When have you heard that preached? <laughs> when have you heard that we should purify ourselves as Christ abides in us and we abide in him just as he is pure we should be pure even as he jesus is pure that's why paul said these words in philippians chapter 1 verse 21 for me to live is christ and to die is gain <laughs> guys did you know to die is gain? We could have joy and peace in our heart to take our last breath knowing we're going to be with jesus for eternity but if we're living in the desires of the flesh, the desires of sin nature and fulfilling our desire, own desires of the flesh, then we have guilt in our conscience and we're not looking forward for that day because our conscience isn't clear. <laughs> That's why I love Bible verses like this, guys, because it makes me want to live a 
a righteous, holy life the best way I know. By the way, Jesus gives us power and authority to do this. And nothing shall harm us. You can find that in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. If you're one of those, like I used to be in when I was still green behind my ears before I knew the word of God and who Christ really was, <clears throat> I was living in sin nature purposefully and willfully because I didn't understand my identity in Christ and the power and authority that he gives to me to say no. I just said, God's grace is sufficient. Oh, I can, I can, sh I can show you all the Bible verses about God's grace and forgiveness. But not one of those sin natures and desires I was fulfilling will ever enter the kingdom of heaven. Woo! Luke 10, 19, Jesus tells us, I give you power and authority to trample on snakes and over all, not some, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. That means he gives us power and authority in Jesus Christ to say no to pornography, say no to drugs, say no to alcohol, say no to cussing and swearing and lying gossip. Ooh, did I say gossip? Yeah, the Bible says gossip. No sin is greater than another. In, in the book of James, if we've committed one, we've committed them all. See, a lot of Christians, they think the murder and all these other sins are so much greater than their little gossip about other people. Yeah, if it's a rumor and you didn't verify it's true and you're gossiping about somebody, that is just as bad as the murderer. Hello? Hello? The Bible says so. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain, Paul says in Philippians 1.21. Why was he saying to die is gain? Because he knew his identity in Jesus Christ. And we can know it too. We have power and authority in this world. The kingdom of God liveth within you and me. Woo! Your body's the temple for the Holy Spirit. It's not yours. It's God's. The temple for the Holy Spirit of God to live in your body. And we, the Bible says, whatever we eat or whatever we drink or whatever we do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything that God has given us on the face of this earth can be used to glorify Him. But we have to choose to glorify Him and not to fulfill the uh, desires of the flesh. We cannot serve two masters, guys. The Bible says we cannot serve two masters. We're going to love one and hate the other or despise one and love the other. 1 Corinthians 3, 10, verse 13, verse 10 through 15. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, Paul says, I have laid the foundation. Who's the foundation? Check it out. And another builds on it. We can build on it. But each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus the Christ. Woo! Jesus Christ is the foundation. It's been laid and you got to build on it. If you built your own house in desires of the flesh, you're building on the sand and it will fall with a great crash. But if you build off of the solid foundation, the rock, the cornerstone, Jesus the Christ, no one will knock that house over. It's impossible because you have power and authority in Jesus Christ and he will protect you and he will abide in you and you are the branch that is attached to the vine, John 15, and you can do all things. But if you are not attached to the vine, Jesus the Christ, you will wither and be gathered and be burnt. Woo! Now, let's finish this in Matthew 7. Jesus speaking himself in verse 21. He says these words that make me sad every time I read it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Why does he say that? But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. What is his will? What is the Father's will? It's in the Bible. It's in the Word of God. Do you want it? Do you love him? Do you want to apply his words? Because he tells us also in the book of John that if you do not accept him and his words, his words in the Bible will judge you at the last day. And then he says this, but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do many wonderful works and perform miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them, Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. Guys, you can get it right today. We can get it right today, guys. If we apply this 
apply this and say no to the desires of the flesh and take it serious and want to have to walk with Jesus and walk a pure life the best way we know how just as he is pure let's also be pure and apply this I know some messages being preached twists it and makes you feel good about your sin nature but let's you're never going to regret it guys you're never ever going to regret it by taking it serious don't don't take my word for it take God's word for it and y'all have a blessed day love you all